The US's ban on Russian oil has led to a crippling rise in fuel costs. Can the US let go of foreign oil? Welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Matt Ganesta, filling in this week for Chris while he's on vacation. So remember back when Russia invaded Ukraine and everyone was holding up little Ukrainian flags and even lighting up their buildings with blue and yellow. And now everyone's like, wait, the Kardashians are back? Forget Ukraine, this is the real human drama. Well, bad news, America. You can't move on just yet because that stupid Russia invasion thing does still affect you mainly in the form of insanely high gas prices. Yes, Russia is to blame, at least according to the White House, which is now trying to push the hashtag Putin price hike, which is like trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. But at any rate, in order to punish Russian leader Vladimir Putin, President Joe Biden banned imports of Russian oil and natural gas through an executive order. And to stop unscrupulous companies from finding workarounds, the order also bars new U.S. investment in Russia's energy sector and blocks Americans from financing foreign companies that invest in the sector. As a result, there's been a huge increase in gasoline prices here in the U.S., since gasoline, of course, comes from oil. According to one economist at the consulting firm Grant Thornton, households would spend $850 more this year than last year if gasoline prices remain above $4 a gallon for most of 2022. Now, technically, the oil from Russia hasn't stopped flowing. While U.S. companies are immediately banned from new purchases, U.S. buyers have 45 days to wind down existing deliveries. But that doesn't matter because markets run on greed and fear. And right now, there is a lot of fear. And as a wise Muppet once said, fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate and hate leads to losing elections. That's why President Biden is taking action to bring down gas prices. Or at least, he's trying. He's now turning to countries he once sought to avoid to address oil supplies. Those include Saudi Arabia, Venezuela, and Iran. Yep, that's how we stand up for American values. Embargo Russia, but partner with other dictatorships. Hey, they're just as bad to their own people, but at least they're not currently invading their neighbors. Although the good news is after a lot of blowback, the US is pausing talks with Venezuela. But some sources claim a deal is still on the table. So everything is going great. Meanwhile, Biden says Putin is to blame for the gas hike. But critics are like, no, we should actually blame Biden. Republicans say America had energy independence before Biden killed it. This is a common theme other Republicans are latching onto. America needs energy independence and security to position ourselves on the global stage, and Biden's been undermining it every single day. That's the quickest way to get leverage and to push back on this. We don't need uh, oil from Russia. Well, guy in front of a fake background of the Lincoln Memorial, American energy independence is a lot more complicated than that. I'll explain after the break. Welcome back. In 2020, President Trump made a bold claim. With the tremendous progress we have made over the past three years, America is now energy independent. Energy independent for the first time since 1957. So is that true? Well, technically yes, but also kind of no, because being energy independent depends on how you define energy independent. If you look at the total amount of all energy the U.S. produced versus the energy we consumed, then yes, we achieved it in 2019. That's what Trump was taking credit for. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, the U.S. produced more energy than it consumed that year. This takes into account the combined total of natural gas, crude oil, coal, renewables, and nuclear energy. Another similar way to look at energy independence is that the U.S. exported more energy than it imported. That's also been the case since 2019. But those definitions of energy independent don't mean America is actually independent because America does not, and right now cannot, produce all the energy it needs. For one, 
it doesn't make sense to combine all different types of energy to measure energy independence. Fuels are not interchangeable. Unless you have an electric vehicle, you usually can't run your car on anything other than gasoline, unless you're this guy. You also can't run your lawnmower directly on nuclear power. I mean, I suppose you could, but that is a disaster waiting to happen. That's why net total energy doesn't give the full picture of why we're seeing high gas prices. So let's not talk about all energy. What about oil? Is America oil independent? Some say yes. This data shows that we became net oil exporters in 2020. We also produce more oil than we consume. But if that's the case, why do we still rely on oil from so many other countries? And if Russian oil is only less than 8% of our imports, why is losing it so painful? Because oil is just too expensive if we don't rely on other countries. See, most made in USA oil is extracted from just five states, Texas, North Dakota, New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Alaska. But getting oil from those states to the rest of the country isn't easy. Pipelines and railways can provide oil, but they can't reach some regions. This leaves shipping vessels. Unfortunately, there are maritime regulations that limit the size of vessels that can transport goods between U.S. ports. So oil buyers on the West and East Coasts can't get supplies shipped out of the Gulf Coast on those big ships. And it doesn't make economic sense for companies to ship oil to the coast on small ships. According to one oil analyst, sometimes it's a lot cheaper to get cargo from Rotterdam in the Netherlands to the East Coast than to push it from Texas. So while a lot of people say we should ditch foreign oil and make the U.S. rely on itself for oil, there are a lot of reasons why it's actually cheaper to import some and export some instead. And on top of that, there's a big problem with our oil infrastructure. I'll explain after the break. Welcome back. There are a lot of reasons why importing oil from other countries can be cheaper than moving it from state to state. Many say we should drill more so we can limit our dependence on foreign oil. After all, we've been both the top producer and consumer of oil since 2018. But even if we made domestic transportation easier and more profitable, there is another issue. While it's true the U.S. does produce more barrels of oil than it uses, a lot of it's the wrong type of oil. Most of the crude oil extracted in the U.S. is light and sweet, meaning it has less sulfur than heavy crude oil. But most U.S. refineries, which turn oil into gasoline for our cars, those are made for heavy crude oil, which we mostly get from other countries. That means we export light and sweet oil to other countries who refine it, and we import heavy crude to the U.S. so we can refine that here. Now, if you're thinking, wait, isn't that stupid? Why don't we just build refineries in America to process American oil? Well, you're right. It is stupid. But the refineries have already been built. So we're stuck in an interdependent relationship with other countries, including horrible dictatorships, unless we invest in fixing this problem. And there's zero financial incentive to fix it as long as the U.S. government keeps finding horrible dictatorships for us to import oil from. But let's say we were to live in a magical rainbow world where all the oil companies work together and do the right thing for Americans and not their own pocketbooks. And they build those refineries to process American light and sweet oil for Americans. Would we finally be protected from these crazy high gas prices? Not necessarily. Back in 2015, President Barack Obama passed a bill which allowed American drillers to sell oil anywhere in the world. So now prices for American drilled oil are tied to global prices. Even if oil sold for cheaper prices domestically, U.S. producers would prefer to export oil if they can sell it for more abroad. And that in turn would drive up prices in the U.S. So your price at the pump is a reflection of the global market anyway. But at least the current spike in prices is Putin's fault, right? Well, as I said, yes, but not directly. The price we're seeing at gas stations is actually just the global markets reacting to the fear of an oil shortage, not an actual oil shortage. So what can we do to fix our dependence on foreign oil so that the next time an authoritarian country invades its neighbor, we don't see this again? One way would be to invest in building domestic refineries that can make use of the type of oil extracted in the U.S. But that's expensive. 
Another way would be to change regulations to make it easier to do more drilling and build more pipelines. But those regulations are in place partly for environmental reasons, which is why some people say we shouldn't be drilling for more oil. Instead, we should rely more on electric vehicles, which is great if you can afford a Tesla, but it's not so great if you're living paycheck to paycheck and you're driving to work in a 1997 gas-powered Toyota Corolla with the paint rusting off. Besides, building new electric cars takes up a lot of resources to manufacture, including oil. They also require batteries. And you know what electric car batteries need? Metals, like nickel. Guess what country is the third largest producer of nickel? <laughs> oh, it's Russia. Some people argue that energy independence is not even desirable or doable. It's just an inevitable part of living in a global economy. A global economy where every time some dictator tries to invade his neighbor like a total jerk, Putin, it affects America too. So what do you think? Leave your comments below. And if you like the show, please know we could not do it without direct support from viewers like you. Visit our new Locals community at americauncovered.locals.com and become a supporter to help us keep the show going. Click the link below. Once again, I'm Matt Ganesda, filling in for Chris Chappell this week. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.